Alrighty, folks. I'm going to just do a run through on the EQ 31 Unlimited by J HUD Studio. This is the EQ I use for all my rigs, the Apache and the 7300. This is 7300 EQ setup. And what I'm, I had a question from a friend of mine asking me to explain what all these knobs are for here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through how I approach this. Now, this is in relation to HF transceivers, and this is according to the bandwidth allotted, uh, the limitations of the TX bandwidth of your particular transceiver, right? So ignore the EQ curve. Uh, this is specific to my voice and microphone and, um, and the rig. Uh, the EQ is uh, different for the Anon. The Anon has uh, a better frequency response. So just, just ignore this part right here. What I'm going to focus on are these knobs right here. Now, I guess you'd call this a parametric. I call it a paragraph. So you have the sliders. This is an extremely fundamental layman's from a layman's perspective. All right fundamental point of view for people who have never worked with this before and they have no idea what this stuff is down here. All right, so I'm going to just keep it simple. So these sliders right here are the boost and cut of the frequency that is set on these knobs. Now these knobs can set the frequency uh, for each one of these sliders for, you know, uh, and what this, what this frequency is right here, so if you go right here, um, in this knob right here, this is the center point. Now, keep in mind, EQs generally, like if, you, if you're running a graphic EQ, it, it may say on the slider, it may say, let's say it's, it says 3 kilohertz. Well, it doesn't just affect 3 kilohertz. It affects a group of frequencies to the left, uh, lower, below it, and above it, okay? So when you move the slider up and down, it'll affect frequencies below it and above it as well, out to a certain range. Now, the advantage of having these knobs here is you can set the frequency, right? So instead of having fixed frequencies on a lot of EQs, you can vary the frequency. So by default, this EQ is not where I want it. So what I did was, is the 7300 is pretty much brick, brick rolled at like 2,900 to 3,000, right? So what I do is I try to push this a little bit beyond. So let's say, let's just take, forget I even said that. So let's say you have a, tran, a conventional transceiver and it's maximum TX bandwidth is 100 hertz to three kilohertz, right? Let's just take that as an example. So what good is it to have your EQ set up above what the top limit is of the bandwidth, right? So it would make no sense to set this EQ right here on this knob to what you see right here, 2994. If you set that, to let's say 3.6 kilohertz. Your rig isn't gonna pass that through. So what I do is I set, regardless of whether I'm boosting or cutting, I go to the high end, the top end of what the transceiver is capable of producing, right? So let's say it's three kilohertz. So I set this frequency to, let's say close to, just a little bit under three, all right? And I can boost and cut that frequency. So let's say you're running a three kilohertz profile and you want it to sound really good. Well, you can get a three kilohertz, 2.9, three kilohertz profile to sound really, really good. Um, as evidenced by a couple of folks running 7300s, running this type of stuff on them. Um, so what I do is I set my frequency, let's say my profile is three kilohertz wide. My top end, I have set, now I'm not telling you to set it here. This is what works for me, keep this in mind. Um, 
if you want to make a booster cut, a boost or cut at the very top end, which is what I would do to bring up some clarity. If you want some big bottom end in there, like on the 7300, you can push it below 100 hertz. Here's 100 hertz right here. And the 7300 will push all the way down to 40 kilohertz, 40 hertz right here. Um, it will. So, you know, on the top end, I'm pretty much brick walled at 2.93 kilohertz. So I set my top end right here on this slider at 2934. Because again, it makes no sense to set that at 3.6 because it's, you're, nobody's ever going to hear that because the transceiver is brick walled at that point. Now, and this is the same for every single one of these sliders. So let's say I'm set at 2994. Now, if you go to the bottom knob, these adjustments down here, this bottom knob, this is what I call the Q. This is the bandwidth setting. So the, by rolling this back all the way down, it will tighten up. It will, this slider will affect only a very, very, very small portion on either side of this 2994. If you were to take this up and, and ramp it up like this, this increases, decreases the Q, I should say, and opens up the bandwidth. So you may see like 2980 through, who knows, 3100 affected by the slider. That can also be a very powerful tool. Um, I leave mine because I there's so many EQs in here, so many frequencies that I pretty much leave my uh, Q uh, as tight as it'll go. So I'm only affecting that one frequency, right? So that's basically the explanation for how to get an EQ. And this applies to any EQ that's like this, where you have, where you can set the individual frequencies and then you can set the bandwidth that this slider will affect above and below that set frequency. Get it? So, um... That's basically it in a nutshell. It's actually a lot simpler uh, than at first you realize. Um, and there may be instances where you want to run a, a broader bandwidth on a particular frequency. So this slider will affect a little bit more beneath it and a little bit uh, above it, a little bit more above it. So that's this. you got to... Uh, pardon me, because I got a very stuffy nose. If it sounds like my nose is stuffed up, it is. <laughs> I can hear it. So that's basically it. So the point to all this, look at the bandwidth that you want to work on. What profile, if you're on an Anon or an SDR that's capable of running all different kinds of bandwidths, everything from 2.8 kilohertz to like 8 kilohertz, right? You can set your EQ up to affect very specific frequencies, you know, so if, if you want to go to a four kilohertz profile, well, you can set, you can come up here and you can roll this frequency back to four kilohertz. Now, if you're at four kilohertz profile on your rig, it's not going to pass anything above four kilohertz. So it's kind of a moot point to work on any of that. So you can set your top limitation. You can set your bottom limitation. Um, and everything in between. So just because what you see is default, you don't have to use those defaults. Uh, fine tune the frequencies that you want to affect. Okay, and then adjust your bandwidth on each frequency for um, how it sounds. You can see this is this says Q right here. So that's, and I don't use any of the peak filtering or anything. I don't have any of these buttons activated or nothing. You know, it's got a notch, peak, peak or notch. I just, I just run on the peak. But you can play with it, but that ex hopefully everybody gets it. Basic fundamentals of EQ. Um, transceiver uh, TX profile bandwidth, or whatever bandwidth you're running, and EQ within that bandwidth. Okay, everything outside of that, trans transceivers, transceiver isn't going to pass it out. Uh, send it out over RF anyways. So, but make sure if you're adjusting the high end, the high end you're adjusting, 
and the low end is within capability of the transmit, transmitter's transmit profile, transceiver's transmit profile. Thanks a lot. We'll see you later. That's it. That's all I got. If that doesn't explain it, nothing will. 7-3.